Hi there, my name is Ed Thorpe. I'm an associate professor at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine in its Department of Pathology in downtown Chicago, Illinois. Today is my pleasure to discuss our recent publication in the JCI entitled Macrophage Axle Receptor Tyrosine Kinase Inflames the Heart After Reperfused Myocardial Infarction. The first author for this manuscript is Dr. Matthew DeBirch. So according to the American Heart Association, cardiovascular disease mortality has reduced over the past few decades in male and female populations. However, the prevalence of MI still remains quite high in the elderly, and so post-MI heart failure is still a common occurrence. Now, after MI, innate immune cells called macrophages can either heal or harm the heart. So for example, after initial cardiac injury, this leads to an accumulation of cardiac macrophages that can promote repair through crosstalk with other cardiac cells, including fibroblasts and endothelial cells. Now, after clinical reperfusion, this can lead to myocardial salvage, but it can also trigger a hyperinflammatory reperfusion injury associated response, which is mediated by immune cells such as neutrophils and macrophages. And so the real key here is to find a balance between optimizing pro-reparative macrophages and suppressing these maladaptive immune cells in order to promote the most optimal healing. So a key regulator of tissue repair by macrophages is this process called ephrocytosis. Uh, ephrocytosis is the uptake and clearance of apoptotic cells, the metabolism of these dying cells, and the transcriptional response that leads to the secretion of anti-inflammatory factors and repair cytokines. Now in the case where you have defective ephrocytosis, this can lead to secondary necrosis and the propagation of inflammation, but you also have the failure to turn on these transcriptional programs that lead to inflammation resolution and repair. And so a working model is that defective ephrocytosis promotes infarct expansion and poor cardiac remodeling after myocardial infarction. So ephrocytosis is mediated by a number of receptors, uh, including the TAM kinases known as tyro 3 axle mer tk uh, in the case of MER-TK, uh, MER recognizes apoptotic cell phosphatidylserine and triggers through its tyrosine kinase domain cytoskeletal remodeling and the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. We had previously published that enhanced ephrocytosis of apoptotic cardiomyocytes through MER-TK uh, links acute inflammation resolution to cardiac repair uh, after MI. More recently, studies have come out linking axle receptor tyrosine kinase to patients with heart failure and so Dr. DeBurge was curious as to whether or not there was a causal association. And so one of the first experiments that Matt performed in collaboration with uh, physician scientists here at Northwestern was to harvest uh, patients' hearts uh, of whom had previously been subjected to a myocardial infarction event. And as you can see in these three patients, Matt harvested both remote tissue and infarcted tissue and consistently found that axle was expressed in cardiac macrophages that were proximal to infarcted, uh, previously infarcted regions of the heart. Now to determine the causal significance of his findings, Matt uh, went to the mouse model and subjected either wild type or axle deficient mice to coronary artery occlusion. Uh, uh, followed by uh, reperfusion and his subsequent analyses. And so in figures two and three of his manuscript, Matt indeed discovered that axle impaired cardiac function and increased inflammation after IR. And he could see that actually the systolic function was compromised um, or actually improved in the axle deficient mice and also infarct sizes uh, in mice in which uh, macrophage specific axle had been deleted were also significantly reduced. So the question next became how uh, might axle promote inflammation to counteract uh, cardiac repair? And so one of the current working paradigms in the field is that inflammatory macrophages exhibit this metabolic phenotype that's characterized by uh, heightened glycolysis and reduced mitochondrial respiration. Uh, this is in contrast to repair associated phase macrophages in which their metabolic phenotype is more associated with a reduction in glycolysis and enhanced uh, fatty acid oxidation or mitochondrial respiration. And so one of the first observations that Matt made was in figure five that axle is indeed required for components of glycolytic macrophage uh, metabolism in which he took axle wild type and knockout macrophages in tissue culture and found that the axle deficient macrophages upon activation with uh, stimuli such as LPS exhibited reduced acidification of the media consistent with reduced glycolysis, reduced expression of glycolytic associated genes as shown by the heat map, and reduced activation of hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha, uh, which is also affiliated with uh, 
uh, glycolytic reprogramming. The second observation that Matt made was indeed uh, in a cell intrinsic manner that Axel was required for IL-1 beta. And we took uh, particular attention to this cytokine because previous studies, including the Cantus trial, had implicated targeting IL-1 beta uh, as a causal factor in promoting inflammatory uh, uh, atherosclerotic disease. And so IL-1 beta can be produced by components of the inflammasome. This involves two steps, the first which is priming. Uh, by TLR ligands, which can induce uh, the transcription of components of the inflammasome and IL-1 beta. And step two uh, is an activation pathway uh, triggered by such factors such as ATP that can lead to activation of caspase 1, uh, which can then uh, convert pro-IL-1 beta into its mature form for secretion. And so in figure four, uh, Matt discovered that indeed axle augments inflammasome components in which uh, when he added TLR4 ligand LPS and measured IL-1 beta transcription, this was significantly reduced in the absence of Axel. Furthermore, if he added this activation uh, factor ATP and measured the conversion of pro-caspase to caspase 1 in its mature form, this was also reduced in the absence of Axel. So uh, taken together, uh, we were building a working model in which a TLR4 ligand and axle signaling was somehow leading to this phenotype of heightened glycolysis, HIF1-alpha activation, and IL-1-beta production. And so the next question became, how might this occur? And so we took notice of a publication that had linked STAT1 in the regulation of LPS-induced IL-1-beta production. Indeed, in figure six, uh, Dr. DeBurge discovered in cardiac macrophages taken out of the heart after ischemia reperfusion that, that indeed they had reduced levels of uh, STAT1 in the absence of Axel. And then in figure six, he also showed that in macrophages that were lacking STAT1, that they also had reduced activation of HIF1-alpha, uh, reduced profile of acidification or glycolysis, and reduced production of IL-1-beta. So taken together, we propose a model in which damage-associated molecular patterns uh, synergize to signal through TLR4 and Axel to activate STAT1 and HIF1-alpha, leading to this glycolytic inflammatory phenotype that activates the inflammasome and converts IL-1-beta into its mature form for secretion and uh, pathologic functions of Axel. Now, if we put this cell intrinsic model into a more physiologic uh, model of myocardial ischemia reperfusion. Uh, we propose these damage-associated molecular patterns come from necrotic cardiomyocytes acutely after ischemia reperfusion. And this is in contrast to our previous studies in which MER-TK was found to be cardioprotective through the recognition of apoptotic cells in the secretion of factors including IL-10. So if indeed our working model is correct, then one prediction is that enhancing MER-TK while concomitantly decreasing Axel, this should lead to a combinatorial effect to uh, promote the most optimal healing phenotype. And indeed, uh, in figure seven of Matt's publication, that's exactly what he finds in that, for example, if you measure the infarct size in wild-type mice versus mice in which uh, MER-TK has been enhanced through a proteo proteolysis-resistant uh, mutation, you can find indeed the infarct sizes are reduced. Uh, if he also adds an Axel inhibitor, the infarct sizes are even more reduced. And then uh, if he combines increased or enhanced MER-TK and reduced Axel in the very right, uh, this is when Matt sees the smallest infarct sizes. So indeed, enhancing MER-TK and suppressing Axel uh, is one way to optimize uh, cardiac repair after myocardial infarction. So this has been uh, Dr. DeBurge's uh, publication in the JCI, Macrophage Axle Receptor Tyrosine Kinase Inflames the Heart After Reperfused my Myocardial Infarction. I'd like to thank Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine and the Stanley Mann Children's Research Institute, and of course, funding from the NIH and the American Heart Association. Uh, thank you very much.